We're in the middle of the story of the demoness Karkati. Um, she's an incredibly powerful demoness who wants to devour all beings. And she's well on her way, so it seems. She won the boon to enter into the bodies of all, all beings. She's described as the cholera virus. And she, she's still not happy. She's getting everything she wants, but she's not happy. And she's doing these incredible penances. And we get a summary of the story from the sage Narada. In answer to Indra's request, sage Narada narr narrated the story of Karkati. This despicable goblin Karkati became a living needle embodied in a metal needle. As such, she entered into the bodies of sinful people and afflicted their muscles, their joints and their blood. She entered these bodies like wind and caused stabbing and pricking pains. She inflicted such pain on those bodies which had been nourished on impure food like meat, etc. She also entered into the bodies of all beings like vultures, etc. and devoured the bodies of others. On, the account, on account of the power of her penance, she had acquired the faculty of entering into the mind and heart of all and participating in all that the host did the host body. What is impossible to one who is invisible and subtle like the wind? However, since she sometimes liked some beings more than others and some pleasures more than others on account of her impure tendencies, she became bound to them and hovered over them. She roamed freely, but when there was trouble she returned to the needle body as ignorant people do in times of trouble. Yet she was not satisfied physically. Only an existential factor can undergo appropriate experiences. How can a non-existent body experience satisfaction? Thus dissatisfied Suchika was miserable. In order to regain her previous body as a gigantic goblin, she began to perform penance again. She entered the body of a vulture, which flew to the peak of the Himalayas, where the vulture deposited the needle and flew off. Using the solid needle as her support, Suchika began her penance, which continues till now. O oh, oh Indra, if you do not interrupt her penance, she might seek to destroy the world by the power of that penance. It's difficult to see where this story is going, isn't it? I suppose, and, and what are we supposed to get from it? Well, it's going somewhere. It's going, the, the Yoga of the Sister will soon get back on track with this story. But I suppose we've got here this immensely powerful being whose wishes are granted. And this powerful being wants to devour living beings. You can draw what parallel you like here, couldn't you? Um, no matter how much power she has, no matter how much her wishes are granted, she is still dissatisfied. And I, and I think that's a worthwhile point to, to, to take from this. When you engage in the world, when you've got great ambition, are you ever going to be satisfied? Now, she's not satisfied and now she's undergoing penances once again. And in the Hindu tradition, when you undergo penances, you're tapping into huge powers. And it seems like now she's tapping into such power that the gods themselves should be concerned. The sister continued. Hearing this, 
Indra commissioned Vayu, the wind god, to find out the exact spot where Suchika dwelt. Suchika is the uh, name of Karkati when she's in her needle form. Vayu wafted through the different planetary systems in the universe and finally entered the earth plane and descended upon the Himalayas where, on account of its proximity to the sun, there was no vegetation and the whole area looked like an arid desert. Slight um, fallacy there. You would think that they know, the, the, the author of this would have known that the Himalayas are covered in snow and uh, snow would melt in the heat of the sun. So I think we'll just quickly gloss over that one.